Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we'll do my two match reactions for Group F games. Let's start with the first game which got here is Turkey 3, Georgia 1. So for Turkey, man, coming into this game, there was a lot of uh, expectations that Turkey would flop. You know, a lot of people were pessimistic going to the Euros. Uh, Turkey, oh, they would just flop like they did 2020 Euros. And for me, I think it was an anomaly. Like, that, because that Turkey team was overhyped. Let's be real. But this Turkey team is a lot better than that team. And you can see it on the day here with the players. You have like Kochu, you have Chalanahu, you have Arda Guler. You have some crazy, you have some good players on this team. And what Turkey did was fantastic. Now, as much as we got to give a lot of praise to Turkey, we should. I wasn't that impressed with Turkey, if I'm being real, despite the fact that they won this game by a big margin. Because let me explain myself, right? That first goal, great goal there. Great, great solo effort there. The Georgia defense kind of made a little bit of a meal of that, you know, but you got to give credit to, you got to give credit to him. Great, good credit to the guy. Mulder scoring a fantastic goal. And I believe, uh, and it's a fantastic goal. Fantastic goal. And the guy is a right back. He's a right back, and he scored that fantastic goal. Turk, uh, then Turkey obviously doubled the lead there. It was it was marked offside, though, because Yildas was offside. And yeah, Turkey, uh, Georgia had their chances. Then, then they equalized right there. Uh, great, great combination play of Korsavik to Miktos. And yeah, man, I, I just think Georgia got back in the game very, very quickly. Um, after conceding those, uh, after conceding, and I was wondering, like, how is Georgia going to react? Uh, like, how is Turkey going to react, especially conceding a goal just right after taking them the, the lead, especially that goal be disallowed? Because you could clearly tell by the shot statistic here that Turkey were the better team. They had more shots and everything. They had more higher XG. They had more possession. But the thing about Georgia is that there's a reason why they got to the Euros. It's because of how good they are defensively and how well they are in the counterattack. And that was a great, great goal. And keep in mind, guys, that is Jordan's first ever goal in the Euros history. So give a round of applause there. The second half, man. Second half. Um, it it, it was all uh, Turkey. Turkey really came in the second half, really, really motivated. They wanted to make a stamp on the game. And they created a lot of good opportunities. A lot of good opportunities. Maris Vila had to make a lot of good saves. And then Arda Guler, man. Arda Guler, what a goal that was. That was a fantastic goal there by Arda Guler. And let me just show you guys the position in that goal, if I could show you guys. Where is that goal? Right here. 65th minute. Fantastic goal. Fantastic goal the 65th minute. Amazing solo effort to make it 2-1 to Turkey. I think yourself, okay, well, how will Turkey respond? And then it seemed like after Turkey took the lead, it seemed like Georgia and Turkey decided, you know what, we're going to park the bus. We're going to park the bus now and try to see out this game. And this is where Georgia really started to create a lot of good chances, especially in the stoppage time. You know, Zibzi had a great chance there to draw a level. 93rd minute. And there was a big, big miss they had. 93rd minute. This was a huge, huge miss. And then this was a big save, Dodgeville. And because Georgia were pushing so much and they're so desperate for the goal, naturally the goalkeeper pushed forward. But this is the thing, guys. You always have to be careful with this. What if the um, team defends well, right? Because the other keeper catched it, springs it for a counterattack. And because no one is there on the other side, it makes it very easy to concede that goal. And obviously, Okotogal comes off the bench and scores a decisive goal to make it 3-1. And it was over. It was over. And for Turkey, I think they're in a great position to advance. Because our next game is against Portugal. And even though it seems like a tough game on paper, given what we saw with Portugal earlier, which we'll get onto a little later, they can get they can they can get a result in that game. They definitely very well can. Whereas for Georgia, their next game is against Czech Republic. And I think Georgia can get a result against Czech Republic. So Turkey, for me, they're in a great position because their final game, I believe, is against Czech Republic. And I'm not really that convinced with Czech. So, Turkey, for me, they have a great shot at advancing. Unlike they did in 2020 uh, Euros, right? So, but the thing for Turkey, what really uh, is, is for, for disappointing here is that this is, a, this is actually the first time they ever won an opening game in their history of the year, uh, a competition. So, you got to give a round of applause for that. Um, I thought Arjan was great. Kochi was great. Guler, of course. Um, my question for uh, Turkey, though, is that some of the best players I feel like should have started. Like, should Arkitoglu have started? I feel like Arkitoglu maybe should have started and in place of Yomaz because that striker option was pretty bad. The Turkey didn't have a good striker. Then obviously Celik is a good right back. Um, Demerol maybe a center back. He could have maybe started. So, you know, these kind of things are going to be there. And for Georgia, as I said, man, Kavar Scalia didn't have a good game. He was terrible. We got to keep it real. And yeah, Marvishville, he made a big mistake for the third goal. But I understand the idea because a lot of teams do that, so... You know, Marvish I thought, had a good game for the most part. And, yeah, I think for uh, Turkey, as I said, they got the win. That's an important thing. But I think I need to see more from them as a collective unit and scoring. Because the goals they scored today were more of individual brilliance. You know, you're not going to be able to do that every single match. So 
let's see how Turkey can work together as a team and not just rely individuals to uh, save them on the day. But yeah, credit to Turkey, though. They deserve the win 100%. And for Georgia, as I said, don't, uh, don't be disappointed, Georgia. You still have another two games to go. And I think for Georgia, they put up a great, respectable showing. So shout out to Georgia, man. What they did was phenomenal. Next up, it is Portugal 2, Czech Republic 1. Guys, I have a lot. Uh, this was unconvincing by Portugal. And Roberto Martinez, you have a lot to explain here. Why on the earth are you putting Nuno Mendes at a, as a center back? It was so weird because the guy's a left back. And why are you putting... Um, why, uh, it was just such a weird formation. I was like, what the heck is this? Like a 3-4-3? It was such a weird formation. And I just didn't really think it worked out. And Portugal were very unconvinced that first half. Very unconvincing. Sure, uh... They were the better team, you could clearly tell. And Czech Republic were obviously being defensive as an inferior team. But you could clearly tell that Portugal were struggling the first half. They didn't weren't able to create, create good opportunities. Obviously, Ronaldo had that great effort there. I think he had a great header there, right there, the eighth minute of the game. Just get the header on target. But the thing with Portugal is that what makes me so for what makes it so frustrating is that they're trying to rely so much on Ronaldo. And that's a big issue, is that you can't rely on Ronaldo to do everything for you guys. Because he is a great player. There's no denying that Ronaldo is obviously one of the best players that's ever, one of the best players we've ever had, best players we've ever seen in our generation. But there comes a certain point in time where the other players have to step up. And that's my big issue is that it almost felt like Portugal were relying on Ronaldo to show up. And Ronaldo, if Ronaldo didn't show up, Portugal probably, uh, they were probably not going to win this game. And I think for Portugal, they needed this win desperately. They needed, I mean, Czech Republic didn't offer anything going forward that first half. They really didn't do anything. The second half, man. Then the second half comes around. Portugal still struggling. Portugal still struggling to get that goal. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, out of the script, Czech Republic scores a fantastic goal there. Amazing goal there right there from Provode. It's a fantastic solo individual brilliance goal. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, is Czech Republic going to really hold on? But I knew that Czech Republic was going to hold on. I just knew it because Portugal was too stacked. And you have to give credit to Roberto Martinez because as much as I don't want to give him credit, he did make the substitutions and that was critical. Critical because as soon as as soon as that Port Czech Republic took the lead, he made substitution. He brought in Diego Jota. Jota came on, was more impactful. Liao was pretty bad today. Let's be real. And Jota, he contributed to that own goal. The own goal was right there. And you know, great, great combination play right there. Um, a bit of an unfortunate because I feel like the goalkeeper should have done better. It just kind of falls nicely uh, to center back, and the center back puts it in his own net inadvertently. And you're some okay, what is going on, right? So, yeah, it's, it's a good ball. Vitinha, Vitinha makes the great ball um, and to Nuno Mendes. And then Nuno Mendes, and then it goes into Harik, and Harik puts in an own net. I feel like the goalkeeper should have done better there. Then, obviously, uh, Portugal won it at uh, the 87th minute after outswinging across Cristiano Ronaldo, hits a post, and the substitute Jota reacts first, clinically puts the ball in the back of the net. Uh, but then it was actually, Ronaldo was actually marginally offside. Uh, then Portugal won it right there in the end, you know. Uh, seconds after leaving the bench, Conceição comes on. Pedro Neto makes a great pass to Conceição, and Conceição scores to make it 2-1 to Portugal. So, as I said with Portugal, man, is that they have too much quality depth on the bench. But the issue is, it does Roberto Martinez know how to get the best 11? Because a lot of players underperformed. Like, I thought Bernardo Silva was pretty poor. I thought Leal was pretty poor. I thought Ronaldo had an okay game. I'm not going to say he had a garbage game or a terrible game or a great game, but he was okay. Um, Cancelo wasn't that great. Let's be real. Fernandez, I thought Fernandez was actually pretty good. Vitinha was great. Dalot, I thought was eh. Uh, Nuna Mendes. Yeah, Pepe was great. Diaz. And Costa was okay, I guess. But Costa didn't really have a whole lot to do. But yeah, for uh, for Portugal, as I said, man, this is very unconvincing. This is very unconvincing. Because the thing about this team is that they have so much quality to go far in this tournament. But the issue is Roberto Martinez. I don't trust Roberto Martinez to know the best for this team. Because if he really does know the best would have a different game plan and do this kind of stuff and you know if i'm roberto martinez you have to start constant out the next game you have to bench you have to bench leal the next game you have to bench bernardo silva you have to start jota and constant out because they they provide you more options so yeah man that's just my quick takeaways man like i said guys we're going to be doing a live stream later today guys just to recap the entire euro 2024 match day one a lot to break down for you guys hope you guys did enjoy so please remember to like and subscribe let me know if there's any major talking points in the comments section below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.